Hi everyone, so Elizabeth and I are currently in Tunisia and this video will be a housing critique of where we've been staying for the past month. Um, we got a discount because we're staying at a friend of a friend and uh, so we didn't actually pay that much um, for what we got. But there are some things we like about this place and some things we really dislike about this place. And in this video, I'll be going through those. So uh, here is the living room. Um, and one of the things we don't like about this place is it doesn't really have a functioning doorbell. So we've had the desk here. And when people show up at the gate, uh, thankfully, we can see them in the reflection of this television. So this television has saved us when we've had uh, documents sent to us from the United States and we didn't know the UPS people were here except for the fact that we could see them in the reflection of the television. Uh, so this uh, room that we're currently in has dropped ceilings. So you can see the drop ceiling here and you can see how the curtain has been placed. Um, another thing about this, this area is that there are a lot of bars. There's like a lot of security here. So you can see right here uh, outside, you see the metal grating. And so in some respects, we kind of like it and it's pretty and it gives one uh, a greater sense of privacy. But in another, another sense, it just sort of detracts from the view. And throughout the house, you'll see this. There are, where is it here? There are places where you can drop the shutters. So uh, throughout the entire house, this is both for security and um, for uh, reducing temperature in winter. It uses electricity. We don't really, we didn't really use them very much. Uh, so there, this room, yeah, we're done with this room. Uh, over here, here's another room. You know, houses tend to fall apart over time. Uh, apparently, you know, the, the, the data is typically that you need to spend 10% of the cost of the whole house every year just to keep it up. You know, houses are not designed to, uh, at least now, to last for a long period of time. So you we see things like this. So this is meant to go up there, and of course, over the years, it's fallen down and will need to be re-glued. You know, this happens with houses. We do like the materials. There are a lot of beautiful materials in this house. Uh, we like the, uh, the trim, you know, uh, beautiful stone, beautiful floors. Look at these beautiful floors. Uh, so there is quite a lot to like in this house. Um, over here, we have uh, a somewhat of an unused area. That's another thing about this house, that there are a few areas that we just feel, you know, could have been used a bit better. So here we have just sort of a storage area. And up here, there's an air conditioning unit. And then even higher, uh, you can actually, during the cooler months of the year, um, and so we're in Tunisia, so it's beginning to get cool in October. You can open that window and then open the front over there, and, and when there's wind or when there's air movement, uh, it'll circulate air through the house. And this is sort of a centrally placed air conditioner. We've never used it. We haven't felt the need to use it. Um, and air conditioners don't produce a lot of heat. So, you know, I don't really know what the purpose of it is here, but probably it provides good, I mean, because this area right here is open to, uh, that's not a window to outside, we're actually still indoors, that's a window inside, and then another one there, where is it, over there, yeah, you can see it there. Uh, so, we can open these, and then the centrally placed air conditioning unit will help air condition the staircase. Uh, and probably the remainder of the house, but mostly the staircase because these two, I'll show you in a sec, these two windows open into the staircase. So nice tree here. Uh, this is very sensibly done because the, uh, this, this plant will provide oxygen to the whole house and it's located in the central area. So, you know, I'll be sucking carbon dioxide and putting out oxygen. And although we haven't had these open, you know, the oxygen would disperse around the house a little bit better. I don't really smell it. These, these plants don't put off a lot of oxygen. Uh, front door, um, a lot of security here in some of the homes in Tunisia. So this, uh, that, and then, there we go. No? No? Okay. A lot of locks. And so we have another gate, you know, at the front, and then another gate in the distance. Um, so nice trim, 
And on the wall, on the floor too, you can see the trim around here. Again, this is uh, extra material here. You can see extra material, but this material protects the walls and uh, protects the walls in several different manners, both from scuffs from your feet. And also in some places, people tend to just dump water on the floor. And when you dump water on the floor, the water kind of rushes up against the paint and then we'll begin chipping away the paint at the bottom. So having uh, these, this sort of protection, and this is nice stone at the bottom to protect the, uh, to protect the walls is a, is a nice idea. And so we have that all around here. You can see it all around, uh, all around this room. Here we have a radiator. Uh, it was cold, it's been cold a few nights, but we haven't had to use that. I don't know where the hot water for the radiator comes because it's an on-demand system. Uh, so here we have a nice bathroom. Uh, we quite like the fact when they put stone on the wall, this is, uh, you know, it really is attractive and makes the place look beautiful and quite elegant. Um, here we have a, a corner protector. So you can see it's protecting the corner. You know, if you ding this, luckily this is a bathroom and so no one's likely to ding this, but of course if you ding this, then it isn't going to look so attractive. And then you, this is one, looks like one piece. So you'd have to replace the, replace the entire piece. Uh, here we have uh, hot water, uh, towel rack dryers, or sometimes called sanitary dryers. Um, and, you know, no place to hang, like, aside from here. Yeah, so you can hang washcloths here. Uh, beautiful sink area and some storage. It's always nice to have storage in a house. So they have storage here. This house has an elevator. Uh, it's not in use, we've never used it, we haven't need to use it, it's disabled at the present point in time, but it has uh, one, two, three, four floors. Um, it's not actually that big of a house, but uh, you know, it does have an elevator, and the elevator I don't think is wide enough for a wheelchair, um, but I guess it would be useful, you know, if you had a lot of stuff that you were bringing up. We haven't used it, I haven't seen the need to use it. So here's the kitchen. The kitchen is somewhat different than the remainder of the house. Uh, not a whole lot that we like in the kitchen. So I'll go through the kitchen. They have some nice area, storage area over here. You know, it's a lot of storage area. Uh, not, you know, I don't know. They have a lot of storage area in this kitchen. Uh, the oven, look at that oven. So it's, it juts out, not very attractive. Um, and so, Obviously, this wasn't thought through when the oven went in and there wasn't enough space at the back for the oven. So you really need to think about counter space and what's behind when you begin installing this sort of stuff. Uh, one pro common problem with ovens is that the, um, the text symbols on them or the symbols on them uh, are become um, hard to see and often become erased over time. And that is what has happened to this oven and happens to many ovens. So when we first got this oven, we had to go look online to find it. We couldn't find the exact oven and we kind of just guessed. Uh, but we had to figure out how the, the you know, the, what symbols related to which functions of the oven. So I'll show you here, you know, the symbols are supposed to be here. And so all the symbols, and of course this is broken, all the symbols are off. Symbols are here and here and here, but this has had the symbol scrubbed off. And this can happen, this happens regularly if you use uh, cleaning products, abrasive cleaning products. And on this, over time, you'll rub off the, the symbols. So uh, this oven, this uh, burner system, we don't like very much in order to light it. Sometimes you light it and it doesn't light and you know, you're constantly fiddling with this turning it back to, Then you have to turn it off and then you have to turn it back on try and light it again and Then it doesn't hold So, you know, we don't really like that burner don't really like this uh, this back um, And it gets really dirty. So, uh, you know here. I don't know if you can see that it's you see all the ridges See the ridges here. So not a sensible design for the uh, the back part of uh, the you know countertop of the oven here in a place like this because all of the kitchen grease and anything that you're cooking with gets on here and then all these ridges and the, uh, the grooves right here make it really difficult to clean so not something we really like. Um, washing machine, again we don't really use washing machines. Uh, so you know and it's not always that nice having pipes 
visible. That's not always that great. Uh, here we have another sink. This is nice to, you know, two little two sink basins. Uh, but behind here, water gets behind here. And like always, you know, it begins molding. You'll see this upstairs when I show you upstairs. But you can see the, you know, water gets trapped behind here. And you can't, like in a lot of Brazilian homes, you can squeegee it. And I don't like squeegeeing anyway. But this is even worse because you can't squeegee it. So then you then have to take the, the brush and then you kind of run it around there. You have to use a lot of paper towels. Um, you know, not really well or sensibly laid out. Um, we don't really use them. We don't use the microwave that often. And again, no, we, we did have a dish rack, but the dish rack was really moldy. You can see it up there. Yep, the dish rack was really moldy. So, and I think I got sick one day from the, I didn't realize there was mold in it. And, um, you know, I got kind of ill one day and I think it was from the amount of mold. It was disgusting. There was mold all, all over it. You know, you need to, if you use something like that, you need to wash it, you know, regularly. Um, and then even the abrasive part of the sponge ends up nicking the plastic and then just uh, it ends up, you know, building up grime over time. So we just began laying our dishes like normal out here. Uh, so again, here you have grates, you know, on the other side of the window. Uh, here, not again, something not sensibly done. If you look up there, this is another one of those uh, shutter systems that comes down, but you can see they installed it so that there was no access port. And now they had to cut it away. There you go. Now they had to cut it away. So the shutter comes down and there was obviously a problem with it after they installed it. And then they had to cut a big hole. You know, builders often build like this, especially in areas with air conditioning, you know, machines. They just build the machine right into the, uh, the wall and they don't care. You know, it's the house owner's problem in the future when something malfunctions and almost always malfunctions. So not a great design. And now you have a big, ugly hole. You know, I guess that could be made to be, look more attractive, but you're now seeing the, the machine. Uh, this is a big problem actually with those devices. They're often installed um, behind the wall and that's just gonna make things difficult going forward. So here, uh, here's a, a washer, no dryer. Um, uh, this is the uh, on-demand instant water heater. So this provides pretty good water, uh, a pretty good flow of water. We've never had a problem with the hot water. Uh, we get it in about less than maybe uh, upstairs in this upstairs shower. Maybe it takes about a minute and a half, but you know, down here, maybe 30 seconds to get the hot water. So uh, this room is uh, a sunroom and there's no fan up here. Uh, so it can get pretty hot in here. Luckily you can open, we can open, can open those. Um, but there are a lot of flies here as well. And so when you open those, when it's warm outside, you just get swarmed with flies and then it makes sitting here a somewhat unpleasant experience. It would have been nice to have a, a fan up there. Of course, when you have fans in this sort of room, you have to be careful about what type of fan it is because, uh, you know, we're by the ocean. And so, you know, the metal might corrode uh, and there might be some additional problems with it. So uh, just from corrosion over time uh, in an environment where the temperature changes and there's salt, misty air coming to us. So yeah, you can see the, the grates, really no need for that here, unless you know, you're really concerned about security. I guess some people here are really concerned about security. Uh, there are a lot of, we live, we're currently in a, in a compound here. And so there are security people all over the place. There are security people um, at the entrance, at the area to the gate, and sometimes just randomly spaced throughout this, this compound, there are security people. So, yeah, and that's just the way it is in some countries. You have compounds and you have, um, you know, you have people protecting it. I don't really know what that is. Some sort of vent probably to the outside. Uh, interesting that they would have, uh, you know, wall outlets here on the wall. And this is probably for a television. Maybe they had a television here before, or we're planning on putting a television because it looks like there's coax cable ports along with uh, the electricity ports. So... Uh, this refrigerator has been okay. Now let's go to the second floor. Uh, anything else on? Actually, we're on the we are on the we're on the ground floor. Underneath is a garage, but I'm not going to show you the garage. There's not much to see in there. 
We had a car for a short time as we were here. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> so I'm just showing them the house. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what to show you. I guess the next thing I shall show is the bathroom here. A lot of problems with the bathroom. Uh, nor These are normal problems that should have been sorted out like a hundred years ago, and yet people are still building homes with these problems. So uh, the first thing we dislike about this sink is that water gets behind here and is hard to clean. This is really a problem, and don't build a house like this, seriously. Make it easy to clean when water, and then mold begins building up behind here. Um, here they have, they have uh, you know, this, this buffer from the wall, uh, but again, mold's building up there and here. So nice to have a mirror here, nice to have a, a socket, we've, you know, and an electrical outlet, we've used that a couple times. Um, here we have one of those uh, hot sanitary, you know, towel dryers, we've used this, but we've only used this cold because there's no hot water at the present point in time. Again, I don't know how this house gets hot water aside from the instant hot water heater. I don't know if the, the probably the municipality doesn't provide it. And if there's no boiler system for the house, then you're not gonna have these devices working. And um, there aren't really many places to, to hang your towels. Now you can take one towel and hang it across both of these, but this is not really a towel hanger unless it's a towel for your hands. This is like something for hanging clothes. So aside from that, right, there's nothing really to hang towels in here. We sometimes hang one towel here and then you close the door and then, you know, it doesn't really dry all that well. So this is something common, uh, common problem with many homes. Uh, the one thing, so here we have a washer. Now it, you can use this in here, but there's no drain here, all right? There's no drain. So, you know, what happens if you get that onto the floor or it begins leaking? This is a, a problem. Uh, the one thing we like about the toilet here, uh, this is, I don't know if it's a bait, again, this is behind the wall. So what we think is that it's just a, a continuous flow pipe and you're not actually filling a basin then pushing because you can push and then you can, you know, two, two minutes, uh, I don't know, like 10 seconds later, you can push again and it will flush both times. Whereas a basin you push and then it, ha it has to fill the basin back up. So this is uh, an interesting design we haven't really experienced before. So there must be like continuous pressure behind here instead of a basin. We very much like this. Um, and it's quite efficient. There are two buttons here. So one for, you know, less fluid, one for more fluid. And here we have the shower. Uh, again, not uh, the end. You can see all the mold there. You can see it there. Uh, so there's a lip and a lot of water comes over here. So there's constant this area is constantly drenched in water We put a towel down there. This house doesn't have like a bath mat here Although it really should have a big bath mat something that catches a lot of water and then after you Shower for a couple days Then you'll probably have to pick the bath mat up and dry it out because otherwise it will collect mold Mold is a huge problem in houses and they aren't designed most people don't design houses for to take care of that or to, to, uh, to limit its, its uh, propagation and creation. So here we have the shower. You can see these bath mats, you know, these anti-slip bath mats, really no need for this. And they collect a ton of mold. You can see how much mold has been collected here and a lot of work to clean these. You can put them in the washer dryer, but it's just a real annoyance. It's, you know, it's not something we really like. Um, and here you can see a ton of mold. Can you see that? You know, a ton of mold here. This has, this isn't flush. And so you're getting a lot of mold here. And the way the shower is, you know, this obviously, uh, they bought this basin area and, but you can see how big the shower area is. So you get water all over here and all over here. So really, I mean, they should have built in the basin instead of purchasing this basin right here because you really need the drain to cover this entire area, not just this area where the drain is right there. So a nice shower. The shower is exposed to the outside, so it's corroding a bit more than usual. And again, we have another grate on here. Now we do in some ways like this grate, 
and don't like this grate. This grate somewhat blocks the view, but there's a road outside. And so this grate, because we, I, I really like showering with the window open. Um, and so it provides a bit of, uh, a bit more privacy, a bit of camouflage, and people are less likely to see you, especially if you don't have the lights on. Uh, so this, you can see this window right here closes and opens. And of course there's mold building up on the window. You know, all of this requires a ton of cleaning and it's just these houses are built so that it's constant, constant cleaning and then de degradation of the materials even with constant cleaning and then the cleaning itself can degrade the materials. So this is a long video, but there's a lot going on with this house. Um, nice tree, nice uh, plant out there. Of course, that's exposed to the outside and you're not getting of the, any of the oxygen that that plant would produce otherwise. Um, here we have another bedroom. Uh, the beds in this house we're not so fond of. We haven't slept too well uh, for about uh, three and a half weeks while we were here. There were there are nightclubs near here, and so the nightclubs have just been playing loud, loud music. And every night you can hear the music, and it was keeping us up. And most nights I had to sleep with earplugs in my ear. Really disturbing. And that's with the shutters closed and the window closed and curtains. And you could still hear that low frequency vibration and even make out some of the music that was being, uh, was being played. Really disturbing, really unpleasant to us and to other people, for us and other people living here. Uh, so this bedroom, uh, there's another bathroom over there, hallway over here with storage. Some people like a lot of storage and others don't like a lot of storage because it depends upon how many objects you own. We don't own that many objects. Uh, so not much to show you in this room. Nice view, nice oh, view yeah, there. Nice view. Yeah. Um, uh, so I'll show you about the air circulation in the bedroom that we have been primarily sleeping in. So in this bedroom, uh, here we have, you know, more storage. Uh, one of the things when people build these, sometimes they don't take a lot of care and this hasn't been built. You can see how this is built. I don't know if it was jammed in at some point in time or what happened with it, but you know, sometimes they're not built so well or sometimes over time because they're uh, because it's resting on, it's not resting on something. It doesn't have support. You know, it's very easy to cave in. So anyway, this is the bedroom we've been sleeping in. And uh, you can see here the, uh, there's a vent and then uh, another vent for AC in and vent for intake and outtake. I don't know, one of the, one of these uh, X fills and one of them infills. Uh, is that right? I don't even know if that's right. Anyway, there are vents here and one uh, air conditioning comes out and air conditioning when you have it on anything but low, the air conditioning blows on the bed. And so that's not something you ever want to happen when you're designing a bedroom. This is a big failure of many bedrooms that the air conditioning unit is positioned or the air conditioning vent that vents the air conditioning uh, is positioned so that it vents directly onto the place where people are sleeping. And that's not something you ever want to do. You want to vent into the room, but not onto the bed. So this is positioned poorly and vents onto the bed. Not a great design. So this is the, uh, this is what I was talking about. You know, we have, you have, uh, the, the, the music is going through that screen uh, and this window you know, this window and then the curtains and really, really loud music. Very unpleasant. Uh, Tomata, I mean, uh, 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 electrical outlet near the bed. Uh, these are nice to have. And so, you know, we have red lights, small red lights that we use at night sometimes, uh, both to provide red light so that, you know, it's just healthier for our, our circadian rhythms. And we also sometimes put them on our body. And so it's nice to have uh, something like this near the bed but you do need to be careful how close you are to the wall because the there's also is depending upon how the uh, the conduit is for the um, for the whether or not the conduit for the electrical wiring is metal or not metal you can have a, a large electromagnetic field um, 
coming out of the those wires. And so sometimes the beds are positioned next to the wall and you have a large electromagnetic field due to having these um, near the bed. Sometimes they're literally positioned right behind your head and then you have a large electromagnetic field behind your head. Some people have switches in their rooms where they can, uh, and I've had this before, you, where you can literally switch off all of the electrical outlets in your room so that you don't have a large electrical field. Or just don't place the outlet and the wiring near your bed, directly behind your bed, or like within, I don't know, you know, 10 centimeters of your bed. You can always get a, an EMF reader and measure, you know, measure that. So yeah, this one isn't so bad, but many have it positioned right behind the headboard. And that's just not a great place to position them. And then you can't flip off the electricity. But I'll show you the roof quickly. And so, or part of the roof, I'm not gonna show you the view, even though there's a nice view here. But so here is the top floor and here we have the elevator and here we have some more storage. And so they have space heaters. You can see they have space heaters here. Actually, I'm going to show you outside. Because it's pretty. So here we are outdoors. And you can see this, what they've done here is really beautiful. So, you know, they have stone here and they've created a bench. So you can sit all along here. Very nice grouping parties or sitting outside. We mostly sat outside. And then they have plants behind here. Beautiful area for plants. Uh, you know, look at this. More plants here. More plants here. And beautiful stone here. Uh, and falling off, falling off a bit there. You can see. And you can see the, some of these stones, you know, depending upon how these stones are cut and where they come from, they do often have, uh, like, I don't know, areas of missing stone. Generally, these are filled at the plant, um, so they're filled with some sort of filler. But when they're outside, the filler often comes out uh, very easily. Or if you're running, a, sometimes, you know, people have stones like this in their, you can see another there, in their kitchen. And if you have a steam cleaner, for example, and you're running the steam cleaner, the, the heat of the steam cleaner will bring out that filling. So you'll have filling come out of the, these and then you need to refill it. Generally, refilling is not too expensive of a process, you know, but it can take some time and you do need to spend more money to refill them. Otherwise, the cracks just continue to grow. So not much else to show you here. We have... Uh, Solar panels. Oh, yes. Thank you, Elizabeth. Yes, this house has some solar panels on it. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, there's the solar panels. So beautiful that it has solar panels. And it's uh, intelligently laid out in that it has a garden hose up here with which you can water the garden. Um, the one other thing I'll point out here uh, that we don't really like, you can see what happens to, uh, you know, what happens to the... Uh, the external part of the air conditioning unit when it's outside, especially near water, that it corrodes pretty easily. Uh, nothing to wind up the hose, so not so great. It'd be nice to wind the hose up. Um, and so I don't know what goes on with the place next door, but they have some sort of machine in their home that like sounds like a bouncing ball. Like sounds like somebody's bouncing a ball against the their their room. I don't know what it is. Um, but it literally sounds like someone's just continuously bouncing a ball and then stopping and then two minutes later doing it again. And so that wouldn't be a problem if it weren't for this. So the sound, you can actually see that's their property, that's their home, and this is this home. And because of that connector right there, the sound goes right through the wall and that's essentially right where our bedroom is. So uh, several nights we've been woken up and several nights we've had a difficult time falling asleep because of that bouncing ball sound. It's, I have no idea what it is. It's just, it's a very strange sound, but the sound because of that connector right there goes right through the wall and into our bedroom. Not so great, not very nice. More storage here. Okay, so there are two other things I wanna show you in this house. The first, uh, we kind of like, but is somewhat of a problem and hasn't been installed all that well. And that's these lights going up the stairs. So these lights are bright white. We would rather have them be red, but 
uh, they're, you know, they're nice and you can turn them on right here, right before you walk up the stairs or at the end, you can turn them on. And very nicely designed, you can see here positioned in the wall, but not easy to access and pull out. So that is a failure because over here, if I turn these on, you can see just one, but they're, they're on the wall here. And so they're out. Now, I don't know if they're out because of an electrical issue or whether or not they're out because the lights have gone out. They're probably out, we think, because we think they were working the first day and then the light got dimmer and dimmer. And so we think that the bulbs are broken, but you can't pull them out of the wall. So, you know, how do you, you know, this is, how do you get this out? How do you get the light out? You don't, you don't easily, not great. Second thing we uh, have a serious problem, or I kind of have a serious problem with, it's a nice design element, but not nicely thought out, is this. Now, you can see the light currently on, and so that's an automatic light. Um, and it's blue. These sorts of lights, unless it's an emergency situation, they'd be white. These sorts of automatic lights should always be red, should never be blue, especially not like bright, brilliant blue. Uh, I don't know if it looks kind of green in this image, but to me here, it's looking bright, brilliant blue. And so we're on the bed, and if we move on the bed at any point in time in the night, this sensor turns on and shines bright light into our eyes. It's actually very bright in the middle of the night uh, when, it, when the room's very dark. So not something, you know, it's nice to have uh, automatic light sensors. They need to be red and you really don't want it so that whenever you move on the bed, the light turns on and that light turns on whenever you move on the bed and then shining bright blue into your face. And they have these positioned throughout the house. Um, do they have them in every, so yeah, every you can room. see every room, you know, here as well. And then this other bedroom too has it. This is not, you know, it's nice, but you know, then you get up, uh, not regularly, but you get up to go to the bathroom at night and uh, then you're being exposed to this blue light. Of course, it's not like really bright, so it's not really gonna disrupt your circadian rhythm, but it's just, you know, it would be much nicer if it was red. They should be red unless they're an emergency type of light. And uh, so here as well, you can see, and they're very sensitive. These are very sensitive. Uh, nice thinking, but not nicely executed in terms of the color and the position in that room so that whenever you move on the bed, you know, it turns on. Not so great. And I have something else to show you here in the kitchen. First of all, there's no drain on the floor. You can see no drain on the floor. Uh, not that big of an issue, but it is nice to have drains on the floor in the kitchen. Uh, the second thing is, one day I was cooking with fat here and uh, here at the stove, and I just wasn't thinking, and I took the fat and poured it down the sink. Um, not a smart thing to do, and then I put some rice down, like a tiny amount of rice, a very tiny amount of rice. And so, of course, the sink got blocked. Now, uh, in a lot of homes, when the sink gets blocked, it's a huge chore. You have to call a plumber, or you have to get your equipment out, and it would have been a big issue. But here, because the intelligent layout of what the plumbing underneath the sink, it wasn't. Now, before I get to the plumbing, just here in terms of the cabinet opening, you can see what's happening here, all this splitting, because it hasn't been positioned all that well. Um, and so, you know, there's a bit of, there's a lot of damage here and some damage down there. So, but underneath the sink, and you can't really do this with disposals, um, or maybe you can, I just haven't seen it done. But so this is underneath this, this is the plumbing underneath the sink. So here you have, uh, we were able to pull this out and dump all the water out. And then I dismantled uh, this right here and then took out what was blocking the sink because I did this and then went away and wasn't thinking. And then we were using the sink and the sink, both sinks were filling up with water. And you could see that's what would happen. If there was a blockage here at this trap. This is called a trap. It prevents gases from the sewer and sanitary system from coming back into the house. Necessary, those gases can be very dangerous. A lot of houses in Brazil that I've, that I've been in, um, I don't know if they don't have the trap or what's happening. Probably there aren't sufficient traps on the drains and those sewer sanitary gases come into the house and they're, they're toxic. Um, 
they could kill people. So, you know, that's why you always want to trap like this. So the, the, um, the fat, um, and it happened to be cow fat, uh, the fat got stuck here. And so I just undid, undid this and then cleaned out this pipe. So really great design. This allowed for all of the water that was trapped up there, that was stored up there that, you know, I had run and then it filled up with water, pulled the water out and then put it this small bucket under here and then released these. And you can see this is a PVC or some sort of plastic. And so it was very easy to take out this drain. Um, you can see the, uh, the hookups under here. There's an electrical hookup right here for the washing machine next door and no drain here. So, you know, you can see over time the amount of buildup um, here. So not so great in terms of what's here. Be nice to have a drain on the floor here so that, you know, well, not for us because we didn't really spill any water, but, um, you know, obviously there's been a lot of water spilled here. So nice drain setup, more difficult to do when you have a disposal, but probably feasible. Uh, so just, we really like this design. This design was just so simple. Um, you know, spilled some fat that could have been a major issue and wasn't a major issue. Cleaned it up really well. So yeah, that's, that's all here in the kitchen. See you. See you.